51 of the most outstanding young women in the USA. With your hosts, Dick Clark and Angie Dickinson. And special guests, Miss USA 1985, Laura Martinez Herring. Tony Award winner, Tommy Toon. And Miss USA 1988, Courtney Gibbs. Tonight, a new winner will know the thrill and the honor of becoming Miss USA 1989. I've had a lot of fun being Miss USA, and tonight is no exception. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce our host, Dick Clark. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Tell me the truth, you won the crown last year. Is the excitement tonight as great as when you won last year? I'll be honest, Dick. I had goosebumps last year. I have the same ones tonight. This is a very big evening. It is indeed, and we've got a lot to get to, so we better get to it right now, Courtney. For all the contestants, this is the first big moment of the night. Here are 51 candidates wearing their state costumes to tell us who they are and where they're from. And what better way to kick it off than with our host state Miss Alabama. Sherry Mooney, a communications major. I'm from Pelham, Alabama. Tina Marie Dreese, a professional vocal entertainer from Eagle River, Alaska. Leanne Locken, I'm double majoring in telecommunications and marketing from Apache Junction, Arizona. Hey, Jandel, majoring in elementary education from Greenwood, Arkansas. Christina Bell, studying psychology from Los Angeles, California. Debbie James, pursuing a career as a television correspondent from Denver, Colorado. Lisa Vendetti, I attend the Lee Strasberg Theater Institute and I'm from South Windsor, Connecticut. Terry Sproul, singer and dancer from Wilmington, Delaware. Lee Singh, pre-law major from Washington, D.C. Jennifer Parker, student and dancer from Tallahassee, Florida. Michelle Namath from Little Vern, Georgia. I'm in showroom management. I'm Julie Larson, an international flight service manager from Honolulu, Hawaii. Kelly Bean, majoring in international Business and Japanese from Napa, Idaho. Kelly Hollow, a graduate from Buffalo Grove, Illinois. Gwen Bolte, Bartley University pharmacy student from Griffith, Indiana. I'm Marcy Requist, a graduate of the North America Travel School from Red Oak, Iowa. Nancy Burris, interior designer, Miles Colby, Kansas. Veronica Hensley, I'm a marketing major from Danville, Kentucky. Elizabeth Cram, majoring in business management from Homa, Louisiana. from Brunswick, Maine. Jackie Carroll, I'm a business major from Gaithersburg, Maryland. Kimberly Wallace, a communications 
majors from Ipswich, Massachusetts. Karen Finuc, an advertising degree and international corporate spokesmodel from Birmingham, Michigan. Julie Knudsen, majoring in business management from Crystal, Minnesota. Laura Lee Durant, I'm studying to be an optometrist and I'm from Olive Branch, Mississippi. Rhonda Hoagland, a senior studying pre-medicine from Kansas City, Missouri. Tammy Ryder, senior honor student studying accounting from Billings, Montana. Renee Harder, studying law from Omaha, Nebraska. Janu Tornell, marketing student at UNLV. I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada. Bailey Schwalk, I'm a print model and aspiring actress from Wyndham, New Hampshire. Deborah Lee Husey, marketing major and model from Rockaway, New Jersey. Tracy Brubaker, broadcast journalism, Alamogordo, New Mexico. Jennifer Fisher, I'm going to be an actress and I'm from Rochester, New York. Jasmine Pageant, clothing and textiles major from Hobgood, North Carolina. Carla Christopherson, entering Yale Law School in the fall from Tomlin, North Dakota. Lisa Thompson, I'm a fashion coordinator from Marion, Ohio. Jill Shepard, I'm a junior at Oklahoma City University from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Jennifer Blaska, an education major from Central Point, Oregon. Denise Epps, I have a degree in marketing and I'm from Lansdale, Pennsylvania. Deborah Damiano, studying television broadcasting and I'm from Providence, Rhode Island. Angela Schuler, English major from Winthrop College. I'm from Rock Hill, South Carolina. Lynette Enders, an international business graduate from Watertown, South Dakota. Kimberly Payne, I have a double major in English and broadcast journalism. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. Gretchen Paul Hemus, I'm a cattle broker and real estate investor from Fort Worth, Texas. Jeanette Van Dyverden, I'm a senior at Bingham High from South Jordan, Utah. Stacey Palmer, I'm a communications major from Burlington, Vermont. Kimberly Nice Wonder, studying business management from Bristol, Virginia. Jan Fan, I'm a pre-med student at the University of Washington in Seattle. Kathy Iker, an international relations major from Huntington, West Virginia. Sherry Baxter, I'm an international relations major specializing in economics and finance from Madison, Wisconsin. Chandra Anderson, entering a master's program to teach gifted children from Jackson, Wyoming. Ladies and gentlemen, the 51 contestants for the title of Miss USA 1989. Into everyone's life, a little food must fall. No problem. No problem. Uh-oh. So why isn't Mom upset? <laughs> no problem. Simple. She made those clothes stain-resistant with New Bounce with Stain Guard, the only fabric softener that helps keep many stains from... The 1989 Miss USA pageant is coming to you tonight live from the Civic Center Theater in beautiful Mobile, Alabama. And Justice, oh yes indeed. And uh, just as this great city and the Gulf Coast has charm and natural beauty, so does my co-host for this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome one of Hollywood's most glamorous and talented stars, Miss Angie Dickinson. <laughs> Welcome, welcome. Are you excited? It's so exciting. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. I'm thrilled to death and extra because I'm not in competition. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so relieved. It really is exciting. Well, it's always exciting because it's live television and it's very unpredictable and it's happening right now. Well, yes, it's also a little scary for me. You're used to this sort of thing, you see. Uh, forgive me if I make a few mistakes. You do not have to be worried because you can't be half as scared as those 51 contestants. Oh, that's another thing. Why are there 51 instead of 50? Good question. You add the District of Columbia and you have 51. Thank you. 
<laughs> I wondered about that. Well, tell me more. All right, now, in just a moment, Angie, or two, we're going to uh, give our audience their first clue as to who the winner might be. And all week, the judges have been scoring our candidates in three separate competitions. Swimsuit, evening gown, and personal interview. And those were the primaries, which will lead to tonight's announcement of the ten semifinalists. Then from those ten, our field will narrow to five finalists and ultimately to the new Miss USA. I guess we're about ready to go. I'm going to be stationed here tonight. Where are you going to be? Oh, not far. Uh, during the show, I'll be reporting from our pageant anchor position right up there. I'll have a view of everything that happens, and I'll be sharing it with the TV audience from high overhead. You're sort of like our version of the uh, Super Bowl blimp. I think you better go before I get in any more trouble. <laughs> yes, well, I'm on my way. Come up and see me sometime. Thank you very much. Angie yes. Dickinson, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right. Now, as you at home watch the uh, swimwear fashion show, you'll see some numbers on your screen. Now, those are the scores our judges have given each girl in the preliminary swimsuit competition. So you may want to get a pencil and piece of paper handy and start scoring at home. Each of our young ladies will model a swimsuit she has personally chosen from swimwear provided by the J.C. Penney Company, including the exclusive Miss USA collection. And Angie's going to describe it for us right now. Against the colorful backdrop of Mobile's historic Fort Gaines, we find polka dots and ruffles and Jennifer Parker, Miss Florida. A tankini is the choice of Tracy Brubaker, Miss New Mexico. Here's Miss Iowa, Marthy Requist. Alabama's neighbor are Miss Mississippi, Laura Lee Durrett in a zippy zip front. Here we have Miss Paige Yandel, Miss Arkansas. This may not be her rock-bound coast, but she feels right at home. Kirsten Blakemore, Miss Maine. Mobile is proud of its azaleas, and Maryland is proud of Jackie Carroll. In a tropical palm print, Miss West Virginia, Kathy Eicher. Gulf Coast scenery and Midwest charm, Nancy Burris, Miss Kansas. Miss Wyoming is Chandra Anderson, wearing a color block monokini. Here is Sherry Lee Baxter, Miss Wisconsin. Miss New Jersey is Deborah Lee Husty. At home near the water is Miss Rhode Island, Deborah Damiano. Miss Virginia plays hostess. She's Kimberly Nicewonder. Jill Shefford, Miss Oklahoma, chooses a sherbet-colored classic tank suit. Enjoying the sun at Gulf Shores Beach is Miss Hawaii, Julie Larson. And in a soft pink wraparound, Miss Indiana, Gwen Volpe. Miss Washington is revealed to be Chian Fan. And Kentucky sends us Veronica Hensley. Our host state of Alabama is represented by Sherry Mooney. Our first beach blanket beauty is Miss Montana, Tammy Ryder. And from Connecticut, Lisa Vendetti. Staline Schwalick doffs her hat as Miss New Hampshire. Miss Colorado jogs with two new pals. She's Debbie James. Not to be outdone is Miss Michigan, Karen Finucane. A small state, but a big smile from Miss Delaware, Terry Spruill. Miss South Dakota is in an animal print tank. She's Nanette Endress. 
Miss North Carolina is Jacqueline Paget. Someone else found a four-legged friend. She's Miss New York, Jennifer Fisher. So did Miss Nebraska, Renee Harder. Miss Tennessee is dreaming of castles in the sand. That's Kimberly Payne. And Miss Idaho adds a finishing touch. She's Kelly Bean. From the District of Columbia, we have Somali Singh. The beautiful Bellingrath Gardens is where we find Miss Louisiana, Elizabeth Prim. A refreshing sight, Kim Wallace, Miss Massachusetts. And another New Englander, Miss Vermont, Stacy Palmer. Miss Alaska, a long way from home. She's Tina Marie Geraci. Jennifer Blaska, Miss Oregon, sports the sporty look in a two-piece logo stripe. Among our many flowers, Miss Arizona, Leanne Locken. Here's Miss Minnesota. That's Julie Knutson. Miss Illinois is Kelly Holub in an eye-catching monokini. Our Lone Star Girl wears a bikini with a twist. Miss Texas, Gretchen Paulhemus. And Nevada sends us Miss Janu Tornell. And Miss California is right at home on a beach. She's Christina Faust. With Georgia on her mind. Miss Michelle Nemeth. And here comes Miss Pennsylvania. That's Denise Epps. Carla Christofferson. Miss North Dakota. She joins Miss South Carolina. Angela Schuler. Perched in a beautiful southern live oak, our lively Miss Utah. Zanetta Van Zyverden. As the sun sets, here's Miss Missouri. Rhonda Hoagland. And our final candidate, Miss Ohio, Lisa Thompson. Aboard the battleship Alabama in Mobile Bay. A salute to all 51 candidates for Miss USA 1989 from the officers and men of NATO's Standing Naval Force Atlantic. The Gulf Coast is spectacular, the young ladies are beautiful, and I know some sailors are very happy. Well, this is it, the best seat in the house, overlooking the entire pageant. From time to time, you and I will be able to see what's happening backstage as well as on stage. Now to explain the judging process, we have a lovely young woman who's going to be our roving reporter tonight. A few years ago, she was judged a winner and really knows what it's like to be in this competition. She's Laura Martinez Herring, Miss USA 1985. Laura. Thank you, Angie. You know, it's a wonderful feeling to come back to the pageant this year and not have any of those butterflies you get when you're competing. And I'm going to have a lot of fun tonight taking you behind the scenes to show you a little bit about how things work. Let's start with how our judges vote by using these computer terminals. They enter a score for each contestant in our three areas of competition. Each score can be anywhere from a one, like this, to a 9.9, .9, like this. During this last week, our judges entered into the computer the scores needed to select our 10 semi-finalists. Not even they have any idea who the 10 lucky young ladies will be. Angie? Thanks, Laura. Thank you. Keep roving, and we'll be checking back with you for some more glimpses. 
When we come back, we're going to find out the names of our ten semi-finalists. Risk everything. Except your hair. I thought styling was torture. And my hair just loves it. I style with Pantene. Pantene puts these wonderful vitamins in every mousse, chill, spritz, and spray. I can hold, shape, lift, but still love every inch of my hair. The one thing I can't do is see why you'd use anything else. Pantene, because it's not just your style. It's your hair. I don't believe it. That's what people have been saying in fine restaurants. But what would happen if you secretly switched Folgers crystals for the fresh brewed coffee in your home? Let's listen. It, it tastes absolutely like what we drink when it's fresh brewed. When I found out, I was totally shocked. <laughs> Mrs. Terry, I said the coffee smells good. I'll be down in a second. Folgers crystals, so dark and rich. Why don't you try the switch? She did it to me this time. She got me. Well, she got me. Good morning. How was last night's intimate little dinner? Not good. Why? Just as I'm serving the most wonderful meal, I see Jessica scraping these gritty spots off her glass. Uh-oh. Maybe that dishwashing stuff didn't dissolve. Uh-oh. Why are you uh oh Tonight, I'm serving the most wonderful meal to Susan. Uh-oh. Introducing new Cascade. It dissolves better than ever for better spotlessness. Well, looks great. You want to make this a foursome? No. No, I don't. <laughs> new Cascade dissolves better for better spotlessness. Catch the Pat Sajak Show tonight. We're back live from Mobile, and we're about to narrow our field of 51 candidates down to 10 semifinalists. Remember, during the week, judges scored each contestant in three competitions, one-third for swimsuit, and by the way, this year for the first time, contestants selected the swimsuit of their choice. This could be more revealing than anyone anticipated. Another third from evening gown judging, again, each girl wearing a gown of her own choice, and the final third of their score is based on her personal interview with each judge. Let's go to Dick on stage. Thank you, Angie. This is the big one. The computer is now printing out the names of our ten semi-finalists, and I'll have those names in just a moment. The first, wearing After Five Dresses by Sherry Hill Designs and shoes by Fred Rico, we welcome back all 51 of our contestants for the title of Miss USA 1989. Remember, when Dick reads the names of the ten semi-finalists, only you and I will see their cumulative scores, so keep your pencils handy. All right, here we go. The names will be read, ladies, in no particular order. There's no significance to the order. Good luck to all of you. The first of the ten semi-finalists is Miss New Jersey. Let's add another name of Miss Colorado. All right, that's two of ten. The third name, Miss Louisiana. Please welcome Miss Oklahoma. All right, it's time to add the fifth name to the list of ten. It is Miss California. All right, we've reached the halfway mark. Five more names will be added. Miss Illinois.
Here's one more semifinalist, Miss Texas. There are three names left to announce, one of which is Miss Pennsylvania. <laughs> Ladies, don't give up hope. We have two names left, one of which is Miss Arizona. Final name on the list belongs to Miss Georgia. Now these are our ten semifinalists. Congratulations, ladies. did you pick at home? Did you pick one, three, all ten? You lie. If you got all ten, you should be picking TV shows for a network. Well, all right, here's where we are. These are the scores that got these ten young ladies to this point. Now we wipe the scores out and begin the semifinals, and all ten delegates are even. The next moment of decision is the interview competition. The scores will, they, I'm sorry, I knew it. I'm so excited for them. The judges will score each of our 10 semifinalists on her poise, her presence, and her self-assurance. All qualities she'll need as the next Miss USA. Boy, do I remember these interviews. This is the part where I really started to get nervous. We'll return right after this from Pampers. When it comes to uh, diapers, leakage is one thing. But what is more important is keeping the uh, skin dry, because dry skin is paramount to healthy skin. Hey, it's more important now than ever, because I'm not just a pediatrician, I'm Gabby's dad. Introducing a diaper with the air dry system. Different, because now the top sheet has air pockets right underneath, so it can absorb irritating wetness almost instantly. Wetness goes down into a lockaway core, air goes up, leaving the top sheet so dry, you can prove it with powder. I uh, recommend this particular diaper. I see uh, the results on Gabby every day. What a great improvement. Today's Ultra Pampers Plus with the air dry system. Because healthy skin begins with dry skin. He says I'm a gorgeous blonde. I say I'm a smart blonde. I use preference. The color is rich with subtle shadings. And my hair has such life. Well, that's the preference difference. He thinks I'm worth it. He's right. Performing preference from L'Oreal. The Miss USA pageant will continue. I want to know what the charges are. Who wants you, this bird? You have been reclassified. Let's not waste any more time. Category red. The ultimate sentence for the equalizer. Then, get ready. Let's go! When Glenn Fry and Deborah Harry join Ken Wall up with the latest rock and roll. Extra up time. On Wise Guy, Wednesday. Paradise, Thursday, Wild West. This is CBS. Who should decide if this fetus lives or dies? A Channel 10 CBS News poll reveals that a majority of Delaware Valley residents polled believe abortion should be legal or legal with restrictions. In 1973, the Supreme Court decided abortion should be legal. But should that decision rest with the federal government or in your state house? What do you think? Find out more as we examine the abortion argument tonight at 11 on Channel 10 News. And put 10 people to work for you. For almost a century, milk has come from our own Wawa Dairy. And today, you can still enjoy the fresh, pure flavor of Wawa milk. is a Wawa tradition. 
Will Dick become a bookbeat TV host? Find out tomorrow at 4.30 on Newhart. Well, we're back live from Mobile, Alabama, and uh, this really is nervous time because here's what our semifinalists face next. Now, based on interviews earlier in the week, we have prepared some questions. With uh, this help, we're going to more, more, learn a little more about our candidates. But this time, the problem is there are millions of viewers in our worldwide audience. They're going to hear the answers, and that's a little harrowing. We're going to begin right now with our first interview with Miss New Jersey. This is Deborah Lee Houston, who's 21 years of age from Rockaway. She's studying marketing at Fairleigh Dickinson University, and uh, you're not the only lucky member of your family. Something else good happened recently, I heard. That's right. I do have a lucky, another lucky member, and that's my grandmother. Um, she was given an instant lottery ticket, and she won $25, and she was put into a million-dollar drawing. And she went down to Trenton, where they were having the drawing, and she really didn't want to be there. And she said, I'm never going to win. And she got there, and she was waiting for them to call the name, and she won. Has it changed your relationship with your grandma? <laughs> no, it hasn't. My grandmother still treats me the same. And it's something that she deserved to get, at, and I think that we can all work and get things on our own. Tell me what the, uh, the Discover You Network is. This, the, the Discover You Network program is a program that I helped to create, and it's for young people, and it's a motivational program. And it just tells them that we basically have two paths that we can take. We can take the harder one, or we can take the easier one. And I just try to stress that there are a lot of rewards for taking that harder path. Thank you very, very much. Would you join us over there, and we'll check in with you later. That's Miss New Jersey. All right, if you will now, please greet Miss Colorado. This is Debbie James. She's 21 years of age from Denver, an advertising account executive student at the University of Denver, studying broadcast journalism. You've got a very busy schedule, I hear. Yes, I do. Very Outline it for me a bit. Well, I'm a senior at the University of Denver. I'm studying mass communications. And then I also work full-time during the day for a magazine called Colorado Homes and Lifestyles. And with all of this, you've got time to do stunt training? Well, about three years ago, I went through the Universal Stuntman's Association out in L.A. Why? And just for a whim, I've also done some other acting experiences in Denver, so I thought I'd take an opportunity to um, pursue some stunt training and take some horseback riding and high fall training and everything else. You're, you're telling me you enjoyed this? I enjoyed it. Actually, it's, it's very difficult to uh, learn how to take a punch and take a breakable bottle and all the other elements that are involved. All right, fair enough. If you could take maybe one or two adjectives and describe yourself to somebody who didn't know you, what words would you select? I would say, number one, I'm a very motivated person, and secondly, an adjective is a color, which is pink. I'm a very bubbly and, and uh, exciting person, I think. Thank you very much. Thank we'll you. join you over there in just a little bit. That's Miss Colorado. Please say hello to Miss Louisiana. She's 23-year-old Elizabeth Prim from Puma, this is most, pho most photogenic. Now, Elizabeth, did, did I hear that you, you stopped going to school for a little while and now you're back in again? Uh, actually, I graduated six years ago and I've been working for the past six years. And what I plan to do is go to Northwestern University in Natchitoches, Louisiana and pursue my business degree. Now, going back, uh, not that you're an old woman by any means, but you're going to be older than some of the people who are there. Is that an advantage or disadvantage? Actually, I feel the experience that I have acquired through working before I attended college will give me a bit of a, an advantage because I'll have the experience and now I'll just pursue the book knowledge. When you were a little kid, were you good or were you naughty? I was very mischievous and I think my mother can contest to that. Uh, anytime anything ever broke, everyone looked at Elizabeth <laughs> because they always knew she did it. But uh, I do remember the time whenever uh, I was given my learner's permit to drive. And I remember on my 15th birthday, I was not to get that driver's license until I showed responsibility. And it was at that time that I realized I wanted to be a responsible person so that I could drive to school. Right, now, if you had one extraordinary ability, do you have it now or is it something you still wish for? Um, I feel like I may, I may have it now. Um, I have the drive and the determination to pursue my goals, and I just can't give up until I achieve them. Thank you very much. We'll join you later over there. All right? That's Miss Louisiana. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Miss Oklahoma, Jill Shepard, who's 20 years of age from Oklahoma City, a junior at Oklahoma City University, pursuing a career in law. 
for the hearing impaired. Uh, I don't mean to be impolite. Are you, uh, is your hearing impaired yourself? No, I'm not. In fact, I got started in working with hearing impaired children when I was in the fifth grade and worked with a little boy by the name of Tim for two years. And he got me motivated with his patience. He taught me sign language. And from then on, I enjoyed it so much, I kept going throughout high school. And last semester, I tutored in a classroom with hearing impaired children as part of my curriculum for school. Are you able to sign? Yes, I am. Would you like to send a message to those who uh, would enjoy one? Have you got one in mind? I would love to send a message. Uh, let's see. Just send it out there and the camera will pick it up. Okay. Never give up your dreams. Find them. Make them yours. And all through your life, never let them go. It's a very nice thought for everybody. Thank you very, very much. We'll join you over there. That's Miss Oklahoma. All right, uh, last in this group of five semifinalists, would you greet Miss California, Christina Faust, who's 23 years of age from Los Angeles. She's a student at uh, Moore Park College. Christina, I have what would normally be an impolite question. Were you always beautiful? <laughs> I know, never... Thank you for the compliment. Uh, no, I, I don't think so. Well, it's, uh, you can't really answer that. Were you, at any one time in your life, uh, short, tall, skinny, fat, not, uh, you know, the normal standards? Yes, I have to say that uh, in elementary school I was very heavy. I, <laughs> I was uh, overweight and my self-confidence was, I uh, didn't have very much of it. How, how did you get over that? Um, I joined Weight Watchers. <laughs> <laughs> you went on a strict regimen? I did. I said, you know, I have to do something here. This is getting out of hand. Do you still have to fight it? Uh, yes, I do. I have to watch my weight very carefully. If you were going to address a group of, uh, and it's a prevalent problem, uh, overweight people, particularly the young people, what, would you, what advice would you give them? I would tell them that nothing is impossible to believe in yourself, to like yourself, and to know yourself. And you can achieve anything. Good thought. Thank you very much. Would you join the other ladies, please? That's Miss California. Now, five of our young ladies are sort of breathing a sigh of relief, but five are still holding their breath. We've completed half of our interview competition. Thank you, ladies, very much. Courtney, what was this moment like for you last year? Scary. I can remember standing there and just hoping that my face wouldn't shake. I was trying to do my best. Well, obviously, your best was good enough to be the judge's choice. You are a beautiful Miss USA. Congratulations. Thank you. We'll see you later, Courtney. Well, when we come back, we'll find out how the next five semifinalists impress this year's judges with their answers. All Sears stores are closed today for the biggest event in Sears history. Thousands of people are at work right now lowering prices on over 50,000 items in Sears stores and catalogs and we'll keep them low. If it helps, think of it as a sale that never ends, because starting at noon tomorrow, Sears will open with a whole new way to shop. You'll get great low prices every single day, guaranteed. It's what we mean when we say at Sears, you get your money's worth, and a whole lot more. We both have colds. Why is he bouncing around like it's a great morning anyway? Well, I'm so <coughs> tired and cranky and headachy, I can't even get started. Why? Because last night when he said, let's take NyQuil so we can have a good morning, I said, why? What's the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, achy, stuffy head fever so you can rest medicine? Got to do with morning, silly. He took it. I can sneeze. <laughs> why? NyQuil. It's also the bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, fully rested, so take it at night and have a good morning medicine. A most surprising thing is happening. Calcan Cat Food is changing its name. From now on, you'll be able to find the delicious, fresh meat recipe cats adore. The pleasing aroma, everything more and more cat owners tell us their cats prefer. With a brand new name, Whiskus. More and more cat owners tell us their cats prefer Whiskus.
right, we're back now to continue our interview competition with our other five young ladies, and we'll begin this time with Miss Illinois. Kelly Holub, who's 22, from Buffalo Grove, graduate of Indiana University, pursuing a career in TV broadcasting, and uh, you were a violinist at one point. Are you from a musical family? It's funny you ask. I'm from a very musical family. Let's see, my mother plays the accordion and the oboe. My sister plays the saxophone and the bassoon. My other sister plays the clarinet and the piano, and I play the violin and the piano. My father plays the radio. <laughs> you were a natural, <laughs> except for your dad. He did a lot of listening. What, are, what was the kid's reaction when you went to school as a youngster uh, as to being a violinist? It's funny you ask that also, because I was referred to as an orchestra nerd. <laughs> It was funny because we all had to carry our violin cases around the school, and so many of the young kids really didn't want to be seen with their violin cases, like it was they were, would be an outcast. And I always hel held my head up high, and I stuck through it, and now I'm very glad that I did because many of those friends are regretting that they were calling me those names. <laughs> let, let me jump to your present and your future. You want to be in television, they always say, that in order to do that, you should be unique. What makes you unique? I think it's the combination of my qualities. Um, I've had an extensive education. I have my Bachelor of Arts in Telecommunications. And as you had mentioned, I am very uh, have a good background in music. And combined with all that, I have an orange belt in Taekwondo. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to hassle you forever. Take a spot over there. And thank you very much. A good combination. That's Miss Illinois. All right, greet now, if you will, Miss Texas, Gretchen Paul Hemis, who's 23 years of age from Fort Worth. She's a cattle broker and a spokesperson for the cattle industry. You are an urban cowgirl and a cattle broker. How'd you get to be a cattle broker? Well, you're not going to believe this. It's not actually anything I studied, and I really had no desire to do that, but I've always had a love for animals, and I've always been involved in the rodeos, and so I thought, at that time, I was doing real estate, and why not combine two investments for my my customers, and so I just read into it and studied it and started doing that. Now, this is, this is a semi-serious question. There are a lot of people these days who are afraid of eating red meat. Now, as a spokesman for the cattle industry, how do you answer that? Well, like anything, it's a choice. Um, if you choose to be a vegetarian, that's your choice. Um, there's nothing wrong with red meat if you just keep it to a minimum and if you just use your own judgment on it. And now, I'm, I'm summarizing this. Cattle broker, real estate license. You obviously are a good salesperson. I guess you could call me an entrepreneur. <laughs> what, what, what qualities does that uh, involve? A lot of curiosity and a lot of drive and a lot of determination and maybe a little bit of flexibility, too. Thank you so very much. Nice to have you with us. Will you join the other candidates? That's Miss Texas. All right, up next we have Miss Pennsylvania. This is Denise Epps, who's 23, from Lansdale. Graduate of Indiana University, uh, Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Now that that strikes me as unusual. I'm from uh, Philadelphia area, Indiana University of Pennsylvania. That's correct. What's that? It's about an hour outside of Pittsburgh. I'm so sorry for my own ignorance. Describe for me your carefree college days. Are they easy? Well, they weren't real carefree for me. Uh, I worked a full-time job. I was a model, and I took my classes very early in the morning, from eight to eleven, and then I drove about an hour and a half away, and I worked all afternoon, and then I drive home and do my studies. Did it bother you or make you feel uh, sort of persecuted that you were overly busy? No, not at all. I think the experience that I gained being in the business world like that uh, has really benefited me. I, I kept up with the college life, not quite as much as most of the college kids, but I still experienced it and enjoyed it. Somewhere down the line when you have children of your own, if indeed that happens, and they go to school, and you can afford to send them through, would you advise them to work? Oh, most definitely. Oh, yes. It, it trains you to be responsible. You become an individual. It's, I would de most definitely, yes. And the last question, I guess, is with all of this training, where are you headed? Oh, I'm headed out to have my own marketing consulting firm. I'm back to grad school in the fall. I'll be getting my master's in international marketing. Much good luck. Thank you very much. Nice to have you with us. That's Miss Pennsylvania. Excuse me, my dear. Right over here. All right, we have uh, two ladies still to meet. The next is Miss Arizona, Leanne Locken from Apache Junction. She's 21 years of age, telecommunications and marketing major at Arizona State University. You met the governor of Arizona, uh, Rose Moffitt. I certainly did. Any I, uh, words of advice from her? She said, go for it, Leanne. That was it? 
That was it. That's pretty good. Go for three words of advice you can remember the rest of your life. Well, considering they came from a very important lady, I took them to heart. Now, I did a little bit of research, and they've asked all of you ladies, people you'd like to meet, and you wanted to meet a man named Lee Iacocca. I presume at this point most of everybody knows who he is. Why do you want to meet him? I think he's a dynamic person. If you've ever watched him or listened to him speak, he speaks with such enthusiasm and motivation, and he just encourages everyone to be the most that they can be. Anybody who would commit so much to an, to an industry to be hurt as much as he was in his first career, and to, yet to pick himself up and go on, that to me is a hero. Do you think those of you who are young can learn from the older generation, or do you think you know it all? Well, I grew up with my grandparents, and I think I learned quite a bit. Yeah, your respect for your elders? Respect and love and admiration. Thank you very much. It's nice to have you with us. Could you join us over there, please? That's Miss Arizona. Our last semifinalist is Miss Georgia. Michelle Nemeth, who's 24, from Lilburn, graduate of American College of Applied Arts, sales manager for a group of ladies' apparel representatives. So this sort of thing is, am I right in this? Don't you uh, have the Miss USA pageant sort of running in your family? Yes, I do. My mother was uh, Miss Maryland USA in 1959. Now, is she here? She is here, yes. Uh, maybe we can get her to stand up, and uh, Tony, we could get a shot of Miss Maryland of 1959. There, oh, looking good. Oh, what was the <laughs> what was the most important advice that woman gave you? She told me to love yourself, uh, be confident, and be determined, and just go in there with everything you've got. And was there anything she didn't tell you that she, you wish she had? She didn't tell me how nervous I would get. <laughs> Do you, do you have a feeling that you're in front of an awful lot of people and that's why, or is it just the excitement of the occasion? I think it's the excitement. This has been a goal in my life uh, since I was five years old, which I'm sure it has been for many girls. What, what is your career goal? Well, uh, my career goal, right now I'm showroom manager for Richard Miller Associates in Atlanta, and I would like to open my own wedding store, and it's very unique. Uh, I'd like to gear it towards somewhere in time and create time eras for weddings, like the 1920s or a futuristic wedding. Sounds like an interesting idea. Thank you very much. Please join us over there. That's Miss Georgia. <laughs> Ladies, thank you very much. You did a great job. That is the tough part of the competition, but I promise you it's over now. And from now on, we will have a kinder, a kinder and gentler pageant for you, I promise. Thank you very much, ladies. <laughs> Still keeping score at home. The only thing I know for certain right now is that we'll have a winner before the evening is over. Trust us. And that's going to be one lucky lady because the next Miss USA will take home not only the title, but cash and prizes and a year's personal appearance contract totaling almost a quarter of a million dollars. I love that part. In just a moment, Dick will tell us more about the incredible prizes Miss USA 1989 will receive after this word from Coast. Sometimes I wish you were a fish. <laughs> Coast, the scent opens your eyes. Coast lather, spirits start to rise. Coast is the way to make you feel alive. Roger, we're here to the park. Coast, feel alive. Come on in to Sunrin's Fresh, like hanging your wash in the sunshine. Come on in to Sunrin's Fresh, like the sunny, sunny feeling. April Fresh and light Sunrin's Fresh. Come on into the sunshine. I just did something about Oat Bran. I changed my cereal to Cheerios. If Oat Bran can be important to my health, then I'm doing something about it. So, starting now, I'm eating Cheerios for Oat Bran every morning. My dad and mommy, my friend Christina, my dog Tommy, special blessings makes it fun to count my 
blessings one by one. Special blessings. Adorable dolls who share the joy of counting blessings with your child. Love to give for special blessings. Brushing, calming, laughing, dressing. She's my best friend night and day. I love her so in every way. Special blessings. New from Kenner. you from experience that our new Miss USA has a lot of extra packing to do tomorrow when she begins the most exciting year of her life. But now Dick is going to tell us what the winner will take home. Our Miss USA will fly round trip to the eastern destination of her choice. Whoever she dreams about, wherever she dreams of going, whether it's to the beautiful beaches of Florida or an enchanting Caribbean island, She'll fly on Eastern for Miss USA and everyone else. Eastern, your ticket to fun in the sun. Something interesting always shapes up with the Home Versa Climber Total Body Exerciser. Tone and firm from head to toe with Versa Climber from Heart Rate Inc., Costa Mesa, California. From Minolta, she receives $6,000 cash, a video camera and VCR plus the new Maxim 7000i SLR system. It's intelligent, ingenious, and a world by itself, only from the mind of Minolta. Along with $5,000 cash, Miss USA receives the fabulous feeling of ivory hair with a five-year supply of ivory shampoo and conditioner. Ivory, the official hair care system for the Miss USA pageant. The exclusive retailer of Miss USA Swimwear, Sportswear, and Dresses, J.C. Penney, awards Miss USA $10,000 plus a wardrobe for appearances at J.C. Penney stores across the country. You're looking smarter than ever at J.C. Penney. In celebration of People's current 15th anniversary issue, People awards Miss USA a $10,000 scholarship plus a lifetime subscription to People. She'll be beautifully informed for the rest of her life. People, that's what we're all about. From an admirer, diamonds from K Jewelers Classic Collection. Bracelet earrings and necklace. More than six carats of brilliant diamonds set in 14 karat gold. Backed by K's 10 exclusive assurances. From White Rain Hairspray, she receives $5,000 and a year's supply of White Rain products. From regular to ultimate hold. White Rain, a beautiful hold at a beautiful price. She receives $2,000 plus exquisite eyewear from Marcolin of Italy by Marchand. Flattering styles, flawless fit, unsurpassed quality by Marchand. The best in eyewear today. What a ride to a dream date in a celebrity bow rider sport boat with super sport interior, stereo, and 175 horsepower engine from Celebrity Boats plus a custom engineered boat trailer from Shoreline Products Inc., a Starnes company. Along with $5,000 cash from Crest Toothpaste, Miss USA receives a year's supply of Crest in six refreshing flavors and assorted sizes. One for every occasion. Crest, the dentist's choice. Topping off a dream wardrobe, Miss USA will wear a sporty mink jacket and natural black glamour mink coat. From Flemington Furs, Flemington, New Jersey. From secret antiperspirant, she receives a stunning Temptations by Sherry Hill wardrobe, as well as $5,000 cash. Secret, the official antiperspirant of the Miss USA pageant. To keep track of his arrival, she has an exquisitely handcrafted 18-karat gold Daniel Mink dress watch, plus her choice of everyday watches from Daniel Mink, watches with character. The new Cougar LS from Lincoln Mercury keeps any dream alive. Stereo, air conditioning, power windows, plus it's longer, lower, wider. Mercury, where comfort and control are one. I hope our next Miss USA is lucky enough to meet a hunk like that. She'll need a lot of help carrying home all her prizes. And would you believe there's more? Our winner will receive a $40,000 contract for personal appearances, plus trip to one of the world's most beautiful beach resorts, Cancun, Mexico. There she'll compete in the Miss Universe pageant to be seen live here on CBS May 23rd, so mark your calendars now. Should our new Miss USA be crowned Miss Universe, her winnings would reach nearly a half million dollars. One lucky woman's life is going to change tonight, and the choice is up to our 11 judges. And thank heaven it's not up to me. So Dick is going to introduce them to you now. Thank you, Angie. We've met the contestants. Please allow me to introduce our panel of 11 very dedicated judges. And ladies and gentlemen in the audience, if you'll hold your applause until we finish, we'd appreciate that. 
First off, founder of New York Select Model Management, an eye for unique beauty and daring promotion, put her at the top of the competitive world of fashion modeling. She's Bonnie Kay. This tennis champion serve has been clocked at 153 miles an hour, fastest in the game. A Davis Cup winner, a Wimbledon finalist. He was ranked fourth in all of the world tennis ace, Roscoe Tanner. Her fictional heroines reflect the strength of her own personality. One of America's foremost romance novelists, her current book, The Awakening, remains on the bestseller list. Here is Jude Devereaux. Bionics returned to television this summer and starring as Oscar Goldman, the Washington man, in a new TV movie pilot, which he's also co-producing, the well-known actor Richard Anderson. Known as the instructor's instructor, a fitness expert whose work on many popular exercise videotapes has led to her own award-winning video, The Professionals Workout One-on-One, -on -one. she's Linda Shelton. In 1987, she was the first Miss Chile to be crowned Miss Universe, a clothing designer. She now hosts a weekly television program in Chile. Here is Cecilia Boloco. An Air Force fighter pilot whose combat decorations include the Silver Star, Distinguished Flying Cross, and Purple Heart, he piloted the Voyager aircraft with his partner, Gina Yeager, in a record-breaking round-the-world flight. Here is Dick Rutan. Seven-time national diving champion and Olympic gold medalist, she was recently inducted into the International Swimming Hall of Fame. Active in women's sports and the USA Special Olympics, she is Jennifer Chandler. Recognizes the country's foremost authority on speech and communication skills, she's coached many celebrities and politicians, author of the best-selling book and audio tape, Talk to Win, she is Dr. Lillian Glass, the only woman pilot in 78 years to win the prestigious Collier Trophy and recipient of the Presidential Citizen Medal of Honor. She piloted the Voyager flight with fellow pageant judge Dick Rutan. She is Ginny Yeager. And beginning as a Hollywood starlet, she's a respected actress who appeared in over 50 feature films and has now turned her considerable talents to the field of uh, film directing. This is Stella Stevens. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome all of our judges. Thank you, judges, very much. I remind you, your job isn't over yet. No, sir, we are getting ready for the next step on the way to the Miss USA crown, our swimsuit competition. Well, we're backstage again, and I remember this moment so well. And I especially remember concentrating so hard because I was afraid that when I walked out of my swimsuit, my knees would start shaking. Can you tell us how you're feeling right now? Very excited. And you? Super! And you? Absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Well, that's how they feel. And when we come back, we'll find out how they do. Where can you find the strength to stop aches and pains without a prescription? In Advil. Advil contains the same medicine that's in the prescription brand Motrin. Yet Advil is gentle, and it's safer to your stomach than aspirin. It's no wonder Advil doctor recommendations have grown each year and now total over 15 million. And the doctors are recommending Advil more and more every day. So why take this or this when today there's Advil? Advil, advanced medicine for pain. If I were a kind, warm, generous person, I'd tell all my friends about this famous beauty treatment. How it feels so rich, yet is really greaseless. How it holds moisture in my skin. And because it's like the fluids, my skin is lost it sinks right in, softening, smoothing. So I look younger. But just this once, I'm going to be small, mean, and selfish. And not tell. Why grow old gracefully? Fight it with oil of Olay. The Miss USA pageant will continue. What kind of artificial intelligence tries to make time with a parking meter? He's having a hard time on planet Earth. Wednesday, he dumped her. I can never learn to stop hating you. Now, will Jill's death... Didn't kill her. ...be her final revenge? Not Wendy, Thursday. It's the legendary ledger domain of David Copperfield with special guest star Emma Sam and the greatest escape attempt ever. David Copperfield, Friday at 8. I'm Meredith Vieira, CBS News. In spite of their elaborate security measures, the Secret Service couldn't seem to keep this president's whereabouts a secret. The problem was traced to the president's traveling companion, a small Scottish terrier who'd become a White House celebrity. Whenever the Scotty was taken for a walk, he was instantly recognized, a tip-off that the president was nearby. 
For this breach of security, the Secret Service dubbed him the Informer. But to everyone else, he was known as Fowler, the four-legged friend of President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. What can you give me for this miserable cold? A decongestant for your stuffy nose. No. Plus an antihistamine for sneezing. <laughs> plus a pain reliever for aching. Plus More? medicine to calm your cough. <laughs> or just two Comtrax. Comtrax, all alone, it does it all. This is CBS. Space, the last frontier. It's been conquered by the new Sonata from Hyundai. With 100 cubic feet of inner space, it has more passenger room than any other car in its class. That's room enough for the whole crew. And with the most powerful standard engine in its class, it can fly. The new Sonata from Hyundai, the mid-sized car that makes sense. This is what butter looks like. Before, it looks like this. Unfortunately, butter can also look like this, if you weren't careful. So we made this, new all-natural Butter Bud Sprinkles. We took the same flavor as this, removed fat and cholesterol, and left only four calories per serving. So even though Butter Buds looks like this, it has the delicious flavor of this. New Butter Buds, a better butter. Will a local police department be voted out of business? The answer tonight. Well, we are back live from Mobile, Alabama, getting even closer and closer to the moment when we will crown our new Miss USA. Keep your pencil handy. The next challenge for our 10 semifinalists is the swimsuit competition. Now, this year, each of our young ladies selected a favorite swimsuit reflecting her own individual style and personality from the exclusive Miss USA swimwear collection provided by the J.C. Penney Company. Only you at home and I see the judges' scores. I just wanted to remind you of that. Now, you men probably don't want to watch the swimsuit competition, but just in case you're already glued to your set, we're going to hear each of our ladies tell us about another special moment in their lives. Here we go, guys. The 1989 Miss USA Swimsuit Competition begins with Miss New Jersey. Deborah Houston is 5 feet 8 inches tall, she has brown hair and green eyes, and she is 21 years old. I'm proud I helped create a motivational program for teenagers. The Discover You Network helps build feelings of self-worth by setting goals and striving to do your best. It's a great feeling to help touch the lives of others. This is Miss Colorado. 21-year-old Debbie James has hazel eyes and blonde hair. He's 5 feet 7 inches tall. Academic excellence means a lot to me, and I am most proud of graduating high school one year early with honors, and also to have performed in a musical show which raised thousands of dollars for the Colorado AIDS Project. It's been an honor to be involved in something so worthwhile. Miss Louisiana is 23-year-old Elizabeth Prim. She's 5 feet 7 inches tall, her hair is brown and her eyes are green. I'm proud of the day I had the privilege to make a speech at the Georgetown Club in Washington, D.C. At that moment, I realized that what I would say would have a real effect on others. Now that's quite a responsibility. Miss Oklahoma, Jill Shepard, is 5 feet 10 inches tall. Her hair is light brown, her eyes are blue, and Jill is 20 years old. Being selected Girl State Governor, a statewide political program for high school juniors is an event I'll always remember. Planning my campaign proved to be very challenging, and meeting the voters one-to-one -one was definitely an experience of a lifetime. This is Miss California, Christina Faust. She's 5 feet 10 inches tall, has green eyes and blonde hair, and Christina is 23 years old. When my brother James earned a gold medal at the Special Olympics, it was a wonderful day in the life, and mine. He demonstrated courage, determination, and a belief in himself that was inspiring to me. I am still being inspired. Here's Miss Illinois. Kelly Hollop is 5 feet 8 inches tall. She's 22 years old. Her hair is brown, and her eyes are blue. 
I'll never forget the day I graduated from high school as valedictorian of my class. That was already a big honor, but what made the day really special was that my father, a member of the school board, handed me my high school diploma. Here's Miss Texas. Gretchen Paul Hemus is 23 years old. She stands 5 feet 11 and a half inches tall. Her eyes are green and her hair is light brown. One of my proudest moments was when I was 18 and I earned my Texas real estate license. It was a goal that resulted from many hours of hard work, including a lot of math. And now I can face life's challenges with confidence and I can finally balance my checkbook. Next is Miss Pennsylvania. At 5 feet 7 inches tall, Denise Epps is 23 years old. She's a brunette with blue eyes. Having the opportunity to live in France as a foreign exchange student was a memorable experience. I learned about another culture and how to be independent and open-minded. It was a chance to step outside of myself and learn about the world. This is Miss Arizona, Leanne Locken. She's 5 feet 8 inches tall. Her hair is blonde. Her eyes are green. She is 21 years old. An exciting moment that changed my life was the day that I met Prince Charles at a charity banquet. He made me feel as if I were the only person there. I realized that if the future King of England could take the time to make me feel special, I should try to make others feel that way too. And finally, Miss Georgia. 24-year-old Michelle Nemeth has hazel eyes and auburn hair and she stands 5 feet 8 inches tall. Working on a drug rehabilitation program for children was an extraordinary experience. It filled me with many emotions, satisfaction and regret for the children. I realized how fortunate I was to have such a loving family. Thank you, ladies. Now we're two-thirds of the way toward the selection of our five finalists, one of whom will become the new Miss USA. I feel so fat. <laughs> Weren't they great looking suits and 10 of the loveliest semi-finalists and one very tough competition. How are you doing at home? Have you picked your favorites? Because I've spotted the winner. It was easy. I picked the one with the beautiful eyes, the great smile, an abundance of charm. That's right. Dick Clark. Okay, so I don't know the winner, but I do know something about how the delegates have been spending their time this past week. They've been up to their leotards in dance rehearsals, more dance rehearsals, and then even more dance rehearsals. But all our young ladies love it because it's a break from competition and a chance for them to work together. Hi, I'm backstage and everybody's getting ready. <laughs> Hi. I'm backstage and everybody's getting ready for the fabulous production number. And we'll be right back after this from Crest. <laughs> Isn't it amazing that no matter how strong and healthy your teeth are, you could still lose them to gum disease? That's why Crest, along with the American Dental Association, recommends that you start fighting gum disease now. Just brush and floss regularly and above all, see your dentist. Because the best way to hold on to your teeth is to take care of your gums. Make sure your bite is as strong tomorrow as it is today. This message is brought to you with the approval of the American Dental Association by Crest, the dentist's choice. My four-year-old's nosebleeds turn his sheets into a horror show, but now they get so white, so spotless, it really knocks me out. Which statement's true? One, this man's telling us more than we want to know. Two, this man's story doesn't wash. Three, this man tried new Tide with bleach. The answer is three. Tide with bleach whitens better than any other detergent. That means a sock this dirty gets only this white with other detergents, but gets gleaming white with Tide with bleach. It'll knock your socks off and get them whiter. New Tide with bleach. The uh, contestants have prepared a, a rousing musical number for our show. And when I say rousing, I really mean it, because our special guest star is an electrifying talent. 
He's a Tony Award winner who starred in the Broadway smash hit, My One and Only. Here's our 51 and Only, along with the one and only, Tommy Toon. Is it true? Is it true what you say? Is it true? Is it true what they say? You're absolutely smashing. You look like pros out there. The judges have scored the production number. You would all get a 10. We did it. Yeah. Terrific. Yeah. It really went well. You were great. Yeah. 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 I'm going to have to take you all to Broadway. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. There's a show going on. Oh that was so great. I'm out of breath. <laughs> Laura, are you still there? Yes, Angie. Well, I know that hours and hours were spent preparing for that dance number, but these young ladies are busy every single minute, aren't they? Oh, <laughs> you bet. 
for the entire 27 days they're here in Mobile, they're always on the run, on the move, and always, always on the jump. From headquarters at the Hotel Radisson Admiral Thames, named for a Mobile Civil War hero, the delegates set out for a day about town wearing sportswear provided by J.C. Penney Company. They began the routing with a tour of Oakley Plantation, a 150-year-old antebellum monument to the Old South. There they were greeted by Mobile's renowned Azalea Trail Maids, who gave them a chance to play the colorful role of Southern Belle. Fort Morgan stands today as a monument to Mobile's Confederate past. Our delegates took the opportunity to relive some memories in the history of this proud city, and were happy to wave the rebel flag in tribute to the boys in gray. Away our boat. Okay, who feels lucky? I do. We're gonna catch some in Big Blue Island today. <laughs> For the more adventurous delegates, there was a chance to try their luck in one of the finest sports fishing areas in the world, the warm waters of the Gulf Coast, and to talk about the one that didn't get away. Other delegates found a variety of ways to get around the Gulf Shores and have some challenging fun while they were at it. Here at the University of South Alabama Children's and Women's Hospital, our delegates paid a visit to the Treehouse Child Life Center. They do wonderful work here for children, undergoing medical care for complex injuries and illnesses. These youngsters were happy to greet their visitors and show them around. They talked. Thank you. They shared. And it goes. They even traded beauty secrets. Our delegates certainly count this special time among their most precious memories of Mobile. The Oak Line Bicycle Path at Marriott's Grand Hotel offers a great way to keep the legs in shape, as well as a tour of scenic Point Clear along the way. For some, a fast workout on the sand volleyball court is the way to go. But then there are those who prefer just a quiet tea time. By the end of the afternoon, all of our delegates gather at Gulf State Park Resort to enjoy the beautiful beach, have a taste of the famous Gulf shrimp, and even come back for seconds. A day to remember that ended too soon. Angie, as you can see, Miss USA candidates managed to have a good time and still be ambassadors of goodwill wherever they are. Well, that certainly seems true, Laura. Now, let's talk about the next step in tonight's competition. If we were to poll our 10 semifinalists, Laura, I'd bet the evening gown competition would be their favorite. Absolutely. Because, well, nobody can see if your knees are shaking. <laughs> well, the evening gown competition is the third uh, step that will determine our five finalists. It's coming up right after this. A perfect size six. So how can she eat like that? And still be a size six. Oscar Mayer baked ham is less than 25 calories per delectable slice. Someone here already knew that. So go ahead. Less than 25 calories a slice. She looks great. And that outfit wouldn't lie. If she eats one more thing, I'll scream. Oh. Oscar Mayer oven roasted turkey is just 25 calories per luscious slice. Someone here already knows that. So go ahead. Just 25 calories a slice. Gosh, it's my first meeting with the chairman. How about this? Oh, it's very, uh, maybe. Something wrong. Okay, you enter the world's largest mahogany-paneled office. You meet the chairman. He says, I've heard good things about you. He thinks, what's with that dandruff? Dandruff? That's my first impression. I shampoo every morning. You could shampoo morning, noon, and night with a regular shampoo. Won't do what this does. Head and shoulders? <laughs> you don't have dandruff. Exactly. Head and shoulders. Because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. It will hurt if I swallow. It will hurt if I swallow. It will hurt if I... Mommy! When your throat hurts, 
chloroseptic works on contact. Because only chloroseptic has the power of phenol to penetrate nerve endings and stop sore throat pain. Fast. More juice, please. Chloroseptic is fast relief. In this beautiful setting, our young ladies wearing gowns of their own choosing now join us for the evening gown competition. They're going to be serenaded by members of the Naval Aviation Choir, and they're saluted by the United States Coast Guard Sword Drill Team and the Marine Corps Color Guard. Gentlemen, the 1989 Miss USA Evening Gown Competition, beginning with Miss New Jersey. Colorado. is Miss Louisiana. Oklahoma. California. Miss Illinois. Texas.
This is Miss Pennsylvania. Arizona. And with the conclusion of this uh, evening gown competition, our semifinals are now completed. Thank you, ladies, very much. As our new Miss USA begins her reign, she'll be preparing for the Miss Universe pageant, which will be seen live right here on CBS May 23rd from beautiful Cancun, Mexico. Cancun is sun, surf, sport, luxurious hotel, white sandy beaches and clear blue waters, a sun lover's paradise and an international resort. And in May, Cancun will become even more appealing when the contestants for the Miss Universe pageant arrive. This is the part where I was praying. In a moment, we'll learn the names of our five finalists for Miss USA 1989. Right after this, from Vacuum Folgers. It's your son's wedding day Waking up his favorite way The best part of waking up Is Folgers in your cup Nothing brightens your morning like mountain-grown Folgers coffee. Mountain-grown beans have a more enticing aroma and richer flavor. The aroma is calling you Promise of something new. Ah, thanks, Dad. As always. <laughs> you know, everyone says today's the happiest day of your life. But it's not. The happiest day is when your son gets married. The best part of waking up Hold you in your cup. Something big is going down at Sears. So big that we're arming over 100,000 employees with pricing guns. We're lowering prices on over 50,000 items, and we'll keep them low. The Miss USA pageant will continue. Tonight on the Pat Sajak Show, join Pat and his guests, Carl Reiner, Bert Convey, and magician David Copperfield. But it wouldn't be the same without you tonight. Hot TV, television for sale, and no holds are barred. <laughs> What the hell's going on in this country? 48 Hours, Thursday. A collision course with destiny that could draw the final curtain on mankind. To avoid the day after, you must experience day one, based on a true story, Sunday after 60 Minutes. This is CBS. Hello, I'm Larry Kane. And I'm Diane Allen. Coming up at 11, the issue is radon, and it's cause for concern tonight in Montgomery County. Orion Reed will have an update. Also tonight... An unprecedented poll on how you feel about abortion. I'm Alan Creo. I'll have that story coming up. And get ready for another round of expressway reconstruction. The lane restrictions and ramp closings are about to make a comeback. And I'll continue my special report in search of miracles. I'll introduce you to a former astronaut who says he experienced miracles while he was walking on the moon. The story is when Diane and I join you at 11 o'clock tonight for the Channel 10 News Update. See you then. 
Set your table with savings from Acme. Covington hand-decorated stoneware, department store quality in two charming patterns. Get a three-piece place setting for only $1.49 with each $50 in Acme register tapes. Accessory pieces available. As for food specials this week, get Lancaster Lean Boneless Sirloin Steak, $2.39 a pound. Eastern White Potatoes, $0.10 cents a pound. Fresh asparagus, only $1.99 a pound. And there's a canned ham at cost sale, too. And don't miss Acme stoneware offer. Limited time, so start now. It's never too late to make it better. Yeah. Jordan Beasley's Mary Well, we are still live and it's getting livelier because in just a moment I'm going to announce the names of our five finalists. But before I do, a little word of thanks. The uh, Miss USA pageant is very grateful for the generous cooperation we've received while we've been in Mobile and the Gulf Shores. And on behalf of a whole lot of good people, I'd like to acknowledge the Honorable Guy Hunt, Governor of Alabama, Arthur Outlaw, the Mayor of Mobile, and Harding Finley, General Chairman of the Host Committee, and all of our friends and volunteers. Thank you very much for such wonderful hospitality. You've really been awful nice to us. Thank you. Now, before we announce the names of our five finalists, I'd like to bring back our ten lovely semi-finalists. Ladies, take a bow, if you will, please. You're looking awful good. Now, I have just been handed the printout containing the scores. And once again, I will read these names in no particular order. Our first finalist is Miss Louisiana. All right, there's one out of five. The second name on the list is Miss Oklahoma. We'll add one more name right here. It is Miss New Jersey. There are two names left in the five finalists, one of which is Miss Texas. <laughs> the fifth and final name, Miss Georgia. Alrighty, there they are. Congratulations, the five ladies, one of whom will be the next Miss USA. Congratulations. Well, we're down to our final five, and home scorekeepers, Discard all scores to this point because, once again, our candidates are all even. You know, this is an evening of firsts. It's my first pageant. Dick's going to tell you about a new feature we're adding to the pageant for the first time. And it's my first visit to Mobile and the Gulf Shores. I really love it. Let's take a quick look around with our tour guide, the reigning Miss USA, Courtney Gibbs. Looking at the revitalized skyline of Mobile, taught by Stouffer's Riverview Plaza, you realize that this is a city on the move. But though it's a city going forward, it maintains its close ties to the past. Southern tradition is important here. Did you know that Mobile, Alabama is the home of the original Mardi Gras celebration in the United States? Mardi Gras has always meant party, and they sure know how to do it down here. One of the wonderful things about Mobile is the way it has preserved its history. The old plantations have maintained their original, stately beauty. Fort Gaines on the west and Fort Morgan on the east still stand guard to Mobile Bay, stirring reminders of the Civil War. But nowhere does the past meet the present more dramatically than here at the birthplace of the city of Mobile, Fort Condé. 
Today, it opened its gates as a tourist information center. The fort now nestles among the modern high-rise buildings of downtown Mobile. Visitors arriving by air get a sense of modern Mobile right away. Our Miss USA contestants arrived at the new Mobile Municipal Airport, the transportation hub for the business and family communities of Mobile County. For most of them, it was their first exposure to that famous Dixie charm. Mobile's leading aviation manufacturer, Teledyne Continental, made aeronautical history with the 1986 Voyager flight. Teledyne contributed the design and the construction of the engine that made that flight possible. Just look at this altitude testing chamber. Now that's what they call leading edge technology. There are many reasons to visit this picturesque place called the City of Azaleas. It's known for gorgeous flowers, streets lined with graceful live oaks, and lovely Alabama sunsets. Mobile is also a university town. The University of South Alabama is known for its spacious campus where traditional meets modern to produce academic excellence. My visit there came complete with color guard and a warm student body welcome. Go Jaguars! More than anything, water has shaped this city. The port of Mobile is 10th busiest in our nation and soon becomes a U.S. Navy home port. Mobile Bay is at the mouth of the Tennessee Tom Bigby Waterway, a massive project linking the Gulf to the South Central region. And plans are complete for a new convention center to be built at the water's edge. And it's water which provides work, like shrimping, one of the area's major industries, and sport fishing, one of its favorite forms of leisure. Mobile's location on the Gulf of Mexico provides a semi-tropical climate and makes this a great place to live. So if your fun is high-powered, or just laid back, and this is the place. Quality of life? Mobilians say you can't have it any better. I'm inclined to believe them. Thank you, Courtney. In a few minutes, we'll give our five finalists one last opportunity to show they have what it takes to be Miss USA. Right after this, from Ivory Shampoo and Conditioner, the official hair care system of the Miss USA pageant. Look, I can't deal with flat, yucky hair. Not today. Your shampoo and conditioner probably contain oil. Wax. How can it be like this when I just washed it? Or fatty ingredients that over time leave a heavy buildup. But not ivory. Ivory's pure, so it cleans and conditions gently, leaving behind nothing but ivory clean hair. Hmm, this should be some day. Don't let buildup get you down. Try pure ivory. The writers of Motor Trend magazine road tested a lot of cars before the Mitsubishi Galant. They road tested a lot of cars after it, but no other car was so well conceived, so well crafted, so thoroughly satisfying to drive. And that is why they marked the occasion in the most significant way they could. The Mitsubishi Galant, Motor Trend Import Car of the Year. for the Macho Hall of Fame. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Stone Age, wake up, huh? Today, guys, eat quiche. Today, guys, wash pots. Oh, Mr. Liberated takes on pork grease. Watch this. Don, greasy pot. Goodbye, greasy pot. Hold it. You got the picture? Uh, oh, you missed one. No problem. And that greasy mess, come on. Hey, but Don, it's a piece of cake. I'm impressed. And Al, love the apron. Get out of here. Don takes grease out of your way. Now, if I may, let me explain what's going to happen next here. Uh, this is a first. Each of our finalists, in turn, will draw a name of one of our judges from this bowl. And we got them all in here. And uh, they will then respond to a question that judge has prepared and will personally ask. Each finalist will have 30 seconds to express an opinion or viewpoint uniquely her own. The judges will consider the content and presentation of each response, which may influence the final choices and the rankings they give. Ladies, if you're ready, let's start with Miss Louisiana. Pick one out of there. All right. 
This is from judge number three, Jude Devereaux. If you could be any historical figure for one week, who would you choose to be and why? I believe I would choose to be um, Betsy Ross because she was there in the revolution when we were fighting, when the, our country was fighting for the revolution, for our freedom, and I believe I would want to be the woman in charge and responsible for making our American flag, a flag that I'm very proud and just am very excited when I look at to know that I'm an American citizen. Thank you very much. Could you step back there? Miss <laughs> Oklahoma, if you'd select one of the judges' questions from the bowl. And we'll see. Why don't you step in here a little bit? This comes from judge number seven, Dick Rutan. What do you feel is the greatest challenge your generation of Americans faces today? I feel the greatest challenge our generation is setting high goals for ourselves, especially with education. We seem to lag behind and we don't get personal enough and strive enough for our goals in education. And if our youth and our generation strive for those high goals in education, I feel that we will be a successful society in the future. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Zerzi, you want to step over? That's the judge's question. We'll read out from whom it comes. This is uh, judge number two, Roscoe Tanner. You're involved in one of the most competitive events that exists. Do you think there's too much competition in our society for money and prestige, and how would you change it? I don't think that there is too much competition in our society today. I think that we should go after what we want, and that means that you do have to compete with other people. But we should give it our all, and we should never give up. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ms. Texas, would you come over? Select the question. Let's see. We're going to uh, judge number four, Richard Anderson. Miss Texas, who do you think makes a better friend, a man or a woman, and why? <laughs> okay. To me, um, a better friend to me is a man, and the reason why I say that is because my brother is my best friend, and we have a lot of things in common, even though we aren't in the same sex, and uh, to me... The bondness is there, and there is no jealousy, and it's just a closeness that is uncomparable. Thank you very much. <laughs> Miss Georgia, it's your turn. It's going to be a little harrowing getting the last one into the bowl. Huh? All right, you want to step on the circle here? Let's see. This comes from uh, judge number eight, Jennifer Chandler. You have five hours to spend in a city you've never visited before. How would you spend the time? Go to a health club, a museum, or a ball game? Oh, dear. Probably a museum. I'd like to learn as much as I could about the city. Um, I'm not able to travel a lot because I do work full time, and, and that would be a big advantage to me, and I would like to learn as much as I could. Thank you very much. Would you rejoin your colleagues up there? <laughs> Ladies, thank you very much. We appreciate your answers. <laughs> I really admire the way our ladies handled those questions. We might think it's easy from where we're watching, but it's not. Um, it's a little like taking your driver's test with a hundred million people in the back seat. So we're getting ready for the final moment. Let's join Dick. Thank you, Angie. Up until now, the judges have given the contestants scores of things like 8.6 or 9.9. Uh, you know, you've seen it and uh, that sort of thing, but this time, our judges are going to enter a single number from one to five into the computer. That number represents the judges' ranking as they indicate their choice for fourth runner-up, third, second, first runner-up, and our new Miss USA. This is the final moment of decision. And we will begin with Miss Louisiana Elizabeth Prim. Miss Louisiana plans to work in the cosmetics industry and obtain a business degree tonight. The important business at hand is naming our new Miss USA. 
This is Miss Oklahoma, Jill Shepard. Jill is a college student, she's already had years of dance training, music lessons behind her, but with the judge's decision only moments away, she's a little more concerned now with what's ahead. This is Miss New Jersey, Deborah Lee Houston. Among her hobbies are drawing, painting, and public speaking. The next time she takes the podium, she's hoping to be introduced as Miss USA 1989. Next is Miss Texas, Gretchen Paul Hemus. She's a rodeo rider, cattle broker, real estate investor. She's wondering what is in store for her tonight. And finally, Miss Georgia, Michelle Nemeth. Michelle's interest in her business in the fashion industry but tonight. She hopes to add this USA crown to her wardrobe. The final judging is now complete. Thank you, ladies, very much. will be. We'll find out after this from Secret, the official antiperspirant of the Miss USA pageant. Hello? Hi. Uh, it's the man with the secret passion for Uh-oh. <laughs> Don't worry, it's safe with me. Did you just get in? Yes. Uh, Rough, huh? Well, I got held up in traffic and then I, I missed my plane. Oh, I bet it doesn't show. I'm blushing. It's just the... What? I missed you. Am I complaining? <laughs> You'll laugh. Try me. Well, it's how you look. You always seem so fresh. Fresh? <laughs> You'd laugh if you knew how. Well, is that something that I could use? Well, let's just say it's my little secret. It certainly works for you. Uh-huh. Interested in sharing more secrets? <laughs> Very. Secret. Strong enough for a man. With pH balanced for a woman. Something big is going down at Sears. So big that we're arming over 100,000 employees with pricing guns. We're lowering prices on over 50,000 items, and we'll keep them low. When you think it's stained forever, you need new hope. Now with more protein power, new era, new hope for tough stains. Give me a hot dog with everything on it. Yo, that comes with rings. Now when you want twice the Pepto, you've got it. Maximum strength, Pepto-Bismol. Ah. It's now time for our reigning Miss USA to take her traditional farewell walk. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Miss USA 1988, Courtney Gibbs. Miss USA was an extraordinary and rewarding experience. It's so hard for me to believe a whole year has passed. The whirlwind began the night I was crowned Miss USA. Then, on to Taipei, Taiwan for the Miss Universe pageant. Next, an invitation to participate in the People's Choice Award on national television. I learned a lot being in the public eye, and it's fun. A very personal and touching part of my year was spent with some very special children. Topping off my year was a worldwide tour with the USO. 
these and all the other people and places and experiences I will never forget. I want to thank the state of Texas, Direct, and my family for their support and their love in all I've done. Thank you to the people of the United States for my year and for memories I'll cherish forever. Courtney Gibbs, much good luck, Courtney, in your acting and broadcasting career. We wish you nothing but the best. Now, our computer has tabulated the votes of our judges, printed the result, and that printout will list the names of our fourth, third, second, and first runners-up and the new Miss USA. The results have been reviewed by representatives of the international accounting firm of Ernst & Winnie and will be given to me by Mr. Mark Ward of that firm. Thank you, Mark, very much. Now, what can I say, ladies? This is the moment we've all been hanging in waiting for. And before we go any further, may I say that we would be very, very proud to have any one of you women be the new Miss USA. You're all wonderful. Thank you. Now, um, to give us a hand, we have a young lady who really knows what this moment is like, the reigning Miss Teen USA, Mindy Duncan. Hi, Mindy. Ladies, here we go. The fourth runner-up is Miss Georgia. The third runner-up is Miss Louisiana. The second runner-up is Miss New Jersey. <laughs> Ladies, do you want to come down here, please? Hang on to each other. I am about to reveal the name of our first runner-up and the new Miss USA. Now, should the new Miss USA be unable to complete her reign for any reason whatsoever? By the way, that could include being named Miss Universe in May. The first runner-up becomes Miss USA. Keep that in mind. Here we go. The first runner-up is Miss Oklahoma. Miss USA is Miss Texas. Gretchen Paul Hemas. <laughs> Congratulations. We better get a crown on this lady if we can. You are the new Miss USA. The cash awards and prizes are yours, as well as the chance to be our country's representative in Cancun, Mexico, at the 1989 Miss Universe pageant. Now, your predecessor, Courtney Gibbs, is going to read the Miss USA creed as our entire cast serenade you. The stage is yours. Gretchen, you are the new Miss USA 1989. of the United States in the Miss USA project in order to further the cause of peace and mutual understanding, dedicate ourselves to the idea of sportsmanship, friendship, and goodwill among all the people of the United States.
Congratulations. Now, we've had a lot of Miss Texases become Miss USA. Are you happy? That's a dumb question, I know. Ecstatic is more like it. How about seize this moment? <laughs> Will you remember it for a long time? I thought I would never forget Miss Texas, but this is one up, I think. <laughs> Angie, we had our work cut out for ourselves. We went out to get a winner, and we got one. <laughs> oh, we sure did. A new star was crowned tonight, right here in Mobile, Alabama. She got up this morning, Gretchen Paul Hemus of Fort Worth, Texas, but she'll go to bed tonight as Miss USA 1989. And for all of our winners and the hundreds of people connected with this USA pageant for Courtney Gibbs, for Laura Martinez-Herring, Mindy Duncan, Angie Dickinson, Dick Clark, thanking you all for sharing this year's pageant with us. Until thank you. Until we meet again from Cancun, Mexico on May 23rd. Good night and Good night. congratulations. Good night. <laughs> Like it hot, and this winter Eastern has hot bears to the hottest destinations. Eastern, we've got your ticket to fun in the sun. This is Kathleen Sullivan. Tomorrow, Tom Landry's first television interview since leaving the Dallas Cowboys. Also, director Steven Spielberg tomorrow on CBS This Morning. Stay tuned for your local news. Coming up next.